thought exercise is really key and it gets everything moving and uh, setting up the, in the right direction. So you want to reach from the crown point, the knee to the ball of your foot. Your right foot is forward. Your, your left foot is, the heel is raised. Can you see my feet there? There we go. So the heel is raised. And so you're, you're, like, you're like this, you're feeling the ball of your foot and you set the knee right over the ball of the foot so that your butt is not sticking out to the side. And you're going to just release and turn. It, sometimes it helps to put your hands on your hips so that your shoulders and your hips are moving uh, at the, in the same plane. You're not, what we're doing is we're not doing this, we're not twisting like this. We're moving the shoulders and hips. The whole purpose of this is to familiarize you with central equilibrium and to open the qua, to get sung qua. So you're releasing down into your right leg, all the weights in that, and you're, you're kind of spinning around on an axis. And once you get, your, get that settled in, you can kind of let your arms just follow. What we don't want to do is this. We don't want to kind of reach over and like that. That's a different exercise, perfectly valid in its own right. But here for this exercise, it's all about softly releasing the qua and settling in and finding that central equilibrium, finding that central pillar. So you're not wobbly as you're moving. You're just turning nice and easy and feeling what it feels like to move from your central axis. And then shift into your back foot, your left foot, pick up your right foot, your front, pick up the heel of that and feel the ball of the, the left foot, set the left knee, reach with the knee one and turn, okay? Nice and easy. Breathe. Turn this way. And you can even play with it a little bit and push your butt out to the side a little bit and notice what that does to your knee, what that does to your hip. I'll feel the tension that it creates there and then shift back and feel it over the ball of your foot on the inside along the big toe line and just get the feeling of that. And just what we're looking for is the most efficient way of movement and, and of uh, holding your posture. So we're looking for the sweet spot because when we find that sweet spot, Cool stuff happens. We connect up to the big chi and stuff starts to move through us. We feel the chi, we feel it's, we're no longer, no longer playing with just our own chi, but we're working it with the, with the big chi, the chi of heaven and earth and, and, okay. So next, put your left foot forward, pick up your right heel and same deal here. Okay, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and you're releasing the qua. And the other thing we're learning here is to, to really get comfortable in the, uh, with the weight like 90% or more in one leg. So you're feeling comfortable that and you're realizing that you're not gonna fall over and you can support yourself. So this is great for, for developing your balance and to also build up leg strength. It's a different kind of strength than, say, doing squats or, or uh, uh, you know, jumping jacks or anything like that. This is you're not pushing away from the earth; you're sinking down into it. So it's a passive strength. It's a yin strength. You're releasing into the connective tissue system rather than using the muscles to push you away from the earth. The beauty of that is that when you do that, you are not uprooting yourself. And then shift your back foot, pick up your front heel, and same deal. All right, so you can do this all day if you like, but uh, we're just gonna do like 20 or so, and then just enough to release the shoulders, relax the hip joints, 
and we familiarize ourselves with the central equilibrium. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to go right into those Tai Chi, uh, Dallas Tai Chi foundation exercises. So in this one, I'm going to move a little closer. And uh, the first one, you reach out with your elbows, palms up, and your hands are like this. They're not down, they're not like that, but they're about a 45 degree angle. A little bit away from the body, not like this, but just out a little bit. So you're reaching with the elbow like you're extending out. And the idea is you're going to rotate from the forearms from the elbow. You want to sink down into your stance and just rotate. And as you rotate, you, when you're going inward like this, you're reaching with the thumbs. When you're rotating outward, reach with the little finger. So feel that. And you want to let go of any tension as you do this. It's very gentle. It's not, uh, you're not looking to fight this in any way. It's just rotating very easily. So instead of it turning into a, um, a strength building exercise, we're talking about getting chin or that internal power that comes from this. You can feel the chi starting to build up in your forearms as you do this, in your hands. So feel the finger, the thumbs as you turn in, little things you turn out, and just very conscious, very directed about that. Each time, the more you can bring your awareness into actually executing that movement, or you're actually consciously feeling those fingers, you're going to get more and more energy, but you're also going to increase the neural connection. You're going to create a um, uh, the, the neurons that fire together, wire together. So you're going to get this, this responsiveness that comes with that. So you don't have to think about that. You're not going to have to reinvent the wheel each time you do this. The, uh, what this does is just by doing this, you increase your power dramatically by consciously doing it that way. Okay, and bring your hands down. And feel into your hands, feel into your feet. Notice the uh, the the chi flow that's that's occurring already. The uh, you can uh, sense it as uh, pulsing or tingling, heat, fullness. Okay, next you're going to. Uh, Bring your hand up the center line and reach out. And then the other hand up the center line, reach out. So what we're doing here from an energetic standpoint is as this hand comes up the center line, it's gathering the, the water chi, brings it up to the heart, and then reaches out, extends out. And that's the fire chi from the heart comes out and then comes down under and heats up the water. So we're getting this kind of thing. Then you add in this little turn using your qua to turn. Nice and easy. You're reaching out. You're not, there's no resistance in your arms. Very, very delicate. Master Chen would Say then, if you're looking to punch, he says, "Oh, here's your coffee. Here's your tea." That was the oh, that that's the kind of that's the kind of tension that you want to have in your in your arms. That that simple kind of thing. There's no, you're not fighting yourself. And by just doing this and actually feeling your arms going up, reaching out with the with the wrist, reach out with the fingers, extend. Sink down, turn, feel that connection. We're developing the water chi. We're creating like this chi turbine.
Yeah, and bring your hands down. Just relax. Elbows out slightly to the sides. Arms very relaxed, just hanging. Reach with your knee one, tuck in the chin. Feel the balls of your feet. Each one of these exercises is generating a lot of chi, but it's also setting a template for effective movements, which then translate into other things, into Tai Chi and Qigong exercises, but also in the in the way you you operate in the world. You're learning how to move efficiently, which uh, as for those of us who are getting older, uh, we would like to move more efficiently, so we have we're able to use the resources we have to more effectiveness. Okay, so next we're going to um, hands palms up and you carry, like you're feeling the viscosity of the space as you're moving. You're gathering, you're lifting the chi, then you rotate and then reaching with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers come down and Sink down into a uh, stance here. Sink down into a half squat as you do that. Inhale as you come up. Rotate and uh, exhale to sink down. Inhale. Gather, feel the, uh, you're scooping it up and then uh, pressing down. And some people do this exercise and they go way low on it. I prefer to actually only get down. So I'm, I'm gonna get down about uh, like this, right? But, but to there, because after this point, if I get down any lower than this, I start to feel it in the knees. I start to, uh, I start to lose some of the energetic connection. Feel the space, feel the air as you move through it. It's like you're swimming through the air. Like you're pressing down. Feel the resistance, like you're, you're pushing through water. But at the same time, releasing muscular tension. Relax, and just feel into that. And when you're doing this, point your index fingers, feel into the wholeness. Also feel your presence. Feel your mind shifting into the space between thoughts and you're just very, very present, very now, in a state of wholeness, kind of blending in with what is, not thinking about it, just being, embracing the state of pure being. Okay, next one. Put your left foot forward, step back here, left foot forward, and the idea here is you're gonna come down and you can do this any number of ways. This time I'd like to rotate your right hand so the palm is up, left hand palm down, turn, sink into your left leg and reach out. And feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right and press down. So all the weight is in your right leg and then shift and into the, you're about 70-30. Actually, about 70 30 in this way, too. Your dominant leg is your right leg, but in this case, as you go back, 
your left leg as you go forward. Reaching out very gently. Here's your coffee, here's your tea. Very flowing. The thing is, you set your elbows and reach out, right? So there's, you're extending from the elbows. Yeah, now shift and right foot forward. And same kind of deal. This time your left palm is up, your left leg, and turn and push. And down and push. Reach out. Even push is a wrong term. We call it push in Tai Chi, but it's more of a reaching. Push generally creates a, a an adversarial response in your muscles. The agonist and the antagonist muscles, they fight against each other. And you want to avoid that. Reaching very smoothly down. And when you come down, you can also do this one with both palms down. Or both palms up. I like to get a little rotation there of the forearm as I go down. Press down and then rotate as I'm coming up. So facing on. So the push is like, ah, oh, there's a there's a, a rotation. So you set the elbows and you're rotating from the elbows and then coming down and rotate. And that generates a spiraling, coiling kind of kind of gin whenever you do that. Good. Okay, left foot forward. This time a little longer stance. And same kind of deal, you're coming back here, sinking a little lower, going into the front leg, and this time reaching out really far. So you're feeling the length all the way up your spine, your leg, out your arms, and then coming down and reaching out, opening, <sighs> opening your joints, extending your spine, As we're using the quad here, we're rotating through the quad, and that allows us to transfer the weight while maintaining stability while maintaining root. Uh, and then put your right foot forward. Same deal. Think and reach. Yeah, man. Hands out the sides. One of the things I want to emphasize here is 
you want to have your your hand kind of um, cupped like that. If you put your hand on your head, that roundness there. You spread the fingers, and you get a roundness in the in the fingers in the in the hands. As if you're palming a, a volleyball or something, and having your fingers, your hands open like that, and it creates a special kind of energy in that. The so next, keeping those hands like that. Bring your, bring your hands just slightly in front of you like this. Arms are rounded. Sink down. Just relax. Reach with the knee one, tuck in the chin, opening up the jade pillow gate. So just to remind you that jade pillow gate is this point here right at the base of the skull. So that where your atlas is. So you, by tucking in the chin, not dropping it like this, but pulling it back like that, right? You get, you create what's called essential hardness or the spiritual force that, uh, that the um, uh, spirit of vitality is another name for it. It releases energy that uh, throughout your body because there's a uh, the base of the skull is one of the major kinks in the hose. So if you unkink that hose, then you're going to allow for a tremendous release of pent up energy. You know, oftentimes you'll get tension headaches if your your hoses kink too much there. So by opening that up, you allow for more circulation into the brain. Bring your arms up. Uh, so about shoulder height, your hands by shoulder height, elbows reaching out, but relax, shoulders relax, opening the joints. Think into your your um, your feet, to the balls of your feet. Feel the chi. So part of what we're doing with these exercises is increasing our tolerance of, of energy. In the simplest terms, Chinese in Chinese medicine, you could say that health is health and happiness based on having lots of chi and circulating it well. So what we're doing here is we're trying to do just that. We're creating some a foundation for chi circulation and cultivation. And that requires practice in order to, to learn how to tolerate having more energy. A lot of people say, yeah, we should have more energy, but whenever they actually get it, it's like, oh, it's too much. We don't know what to do with it. You know, lightheaded. Now, this is takes takes a while to upgrade your wiring and upgrade the uh, micro circulation in your body. Yeah. Blood going to all the uh, the little faraway places in your in the cells that don't get fed as much. They kind of get shortchanged. And bring your hands down. Same thing here, reach your out with your elbows a little bit. Hands are open, rounded, but not stiff, not tense. They're reaching, expanding. Feel your central equilibrium. And just going and doing this, not just while you're doing your exercises, but throughout your day, just checking in allows you to reprogram your body mind. There are certain habits which have were installed very early in your life that haven't really been examined. But 
to move to uh, the next level, to be able to feel good about about your body, feel good inside your own skin, you want to have more chi circulated well and also learn how to move efficiently. Yeah, and step in, deep breath, and then press down and disappear the chi. Imagine you're pushing down on a big plunger and you're scooching it up through your feet, emptying out and creating a vacuum allow for fresh nature chi to come through. And pause for a little bit here and just feel into the emptiness. Dissolve your body. Dissolve your mind, your energy. And just allow yourself to just be, not as a thing, but just being. Those are the foundation exercises. And let's talk a minute. See if anybody has any questions about that. On gallery. Gallery, please. Okay. Any questions on any of that? All cool. Okay. So um, one of the drums I've been beating lately has been talking about elbow chin. That is how to create this, this effortless power by reaching with your elbows. And you know, the idea is for the most part, we are kind of unconscious of our, of our elbows or at least only marginally aware of them. And it, whenever you consciously activate that, you create new neural connections. I was talking before about um, unkinking the hose. Well, one of the, one of the biggest kinks in the hose are our shoulders. We get a lot of tension. We hold things in like that. And movement, we initiate it from the shoulder and it creates tension down the shoulder, down the arms which cause a myriad of problems. And uh, that tension, it comes with the fact that we're trying to do something with a, a lever, which is, has a fulcrum way up here. So not only is it not very powerful, but it's also clumsy. So, but if you use the, the shoulder as a conduit for the energy, and you reach with the elbow, then you are able to generate a tremendous amount of, of, of power within a, a very short space. More importantly, it changes your state of being. You, just by doing this, by reaching out with the elbows and feeling into that, you immediately shift into a, into a whole brain coherence. Valerie. Um, I didn't notice it quite as much when I was up doing the exercise, but now sitting back down, I noticed not tension in my shoulders, but more uh, lower back. Okay. Um, any recommendations on that? Or is that just something that will, as I acclimate to the exercise, that will dissipate? Uh so there's two things that could happen here. Either your back was tense or was in a, a compromised before and you just got aware of it, or it happened as a result of the way you were doing the exercises. So you, you get to, to, to figure out which one of those is, is more likely in your case. Um, but uh, 
if it's as a way of doing the exercises, it generally means that you are not moving from the quad if you're if it if you're getting the back tension because we're really not doing anything with a heavy load with the back there. So it, it would tend to so you know if I'm if I'm twisting twisting my back like this right then then I'm going to create a certain amount of of uh, of tension there. Whereas if I'm turning so that that's why you know I have this the shoulders and the hips together. Okay. So uh, uh, other than that, there's lots of other reasons why backs can be uh, can be problematic, and uh, and that would be you know that's something we don't well, talk about. I just came from the orthodontist, so that might be a factor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and backs is another place where we store up a lot of tension, right? That's another kink in the hose. But if we open the claw and we really settle down into that, then that'll tend to to to, to dissipate. And that 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 simple exercise that we did at the beginning there, that you know that like quad exercise, do that for five minutes or ten minutes, and, and it it will probably help a lot by doing that. Dennis, yeah, I found um, it was a good get that doing that quad exercises with the hands on the hips really made a big difference for me keeping my body straight as opposed right. to swinging my arms. It really made made a big difference for me. I found that a big one because uh, a lot of people, you, you say the term, they initiate from the shoulders and rather than the qua. I mean, that's, that's normal. That's because most of us have very little qua awareness when we start out with this process. So, but by doing that, by putting the uh, hands on the, uh, uh, on the hips and then getting used to the fact of, you know, of the idea of turning both at the same time is, uh, I think, very helpful. Are we uh, on gallery? Yeah, oh, no, we're not on gallery. Okay. <laughs> I just want to see if there you are. any other hands. <laughs> now you're on gallery. There. Now we're on gallery. Thank you. Oh, but you <laughs> know, an, a point you might want to make is that when you're in that one where you're reaching forward, yeah. don't forget that you, you're reaching also with your spine. If you're, you know, uh, the spine also reaches. Do you, want, do you, want, to, you want to talk to them? Um, Over here, you can talk to them. Wants to make a point. <laughs> I was just saying for Valerie, when you're doing this one where you're reaching forward quite a ways, right, quite a ways, instead of catching in your back, you're make lengthen, sure that you're lengthening, you're lengthening the spine, the spine you're opening that up. So it's almost like you're reaching with the knee one all the way from the tailbone through the knee one, and you're reaching with your back as well as your hands. Uh, even when you're standing, when you reach with your knee one, you're also lengthening your, sp your spine. And so if you find it catching somewhere during a move, right? Think of lengthening through that move with the spine. I hope that helps. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, Valerie, because uh, I think it's something that a lot of people will benefit from, whether or not they uh, they, no, yeah, you know, it, it's something that, you know, other people who are actually watching the, the, the tape of this, you know, will also benefit from that too. Good. Beatrice. Um, I actually had a question that uh, Maria's answer just now re, 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 uh, invigorated, which was when we're reaching, where are we bending? Like when, when, when we're reaching out, especially with a long reach. It's a like, long reach, right? Where, where, the, what part of our body is folding? Like, what, I got, your lower body wasn't that visible. So. If we, if we watch it here. Wait, hold on. Let me put you back on. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm coming down like this, right? I'm coming out. Notice that my leg and spine are in the same plane. Okay. So, so I'm not doing this, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not bending. I'm, I'm extending, but there's a there's like a, uh, it's a straight line, you know, from through the back down through the leg. And the knee is straight, pretty much straight. The knee is straight, and uh, but over the. Uh, I mean the back leg, the back knee. The back knee, yeah, the back leg is straight. Okay. So you're. Your line. Uh, you're, you're reaching out there to your to taste. You can uh, 
you know, adjust it to, to your, your body. But you want to work in that direction of like, oh, how much can I, how much can I reach out there? Okay, thank you. You bet. Anybody else? Linda. Linda. I mean, you may have answered this in some way already, but um, I had to uh, put my boot on my right leg for a couple of weeks because I was having problem with those hairline fractures I get in my foot because of its structure. And uh, about a week or two ago, I noticed um, a real soreness in the qua area of the right side. I think when I was walking with the boot, I wasn't doing it even enough, so I was pulling it. And I was wondering if there's uh, what you would suggest. I've been doing those warm up qua exercises and they don't hurt as long as I do it gentle, but walking hurts. And then I'm sitting a lot at the computer. So I get a lot of stiffness when I stand up to start walking. I'm mostly limping. You're getting right in here? Yes. Okay. So chances are what happened is your, uh, your iliopsoas probably got hypertonified. That means that you're compensating for the for the for the boot, and so you were tensing up your your psoas muscle, which is a, a a muscle that goes from your spine down through on the inside of your your ilium or your uh, your hip bone there, and down to uh, attaches on the on your thigh, and so it it uh, whatever say you're you're lifting your leg, you right if if you're if you're doing this, that's the muscle. That's, that's doing the lifting there. So it's uh, the, uh, um, but it's also a, uh, one of the three muscles that get, gets really uh, triggered whenever we are stressed out, which compensating for, you know, your fractures in your foot would, would, would qualify. And uh, the other ones in your piriformis, it's a, in your, one of your butt muscles. But this one is it tightens up and we start it starts to get hypertonified. That means it's working constantly and it's trying to protect you by tightening. So um, if you you can lie on your back on the floor, let me do that here. And there we go. And you can just press in on the that that area and then lift your knee and press in and you can feel if it's tender or not and uh uh and they will help to release it if it's if that, that is indeed the case it but is the case it yeah. is the case because i've been you know when i um I, like i said if i'm sitting for an hour and i stand up i can't even straighten up without pain but when i push in there i feel the tenderness Right. And hold so just it press in there and just, just send some love into that, right? Talk to it real nice and sweet and say, oh, baby, I love you, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on. We're, we're in this together. <laughs> Me and my other so is, you know, and then you, uh, then uh, it'll look like, oh, okay, I can let go. It's okay. It's okay. The boot's gone. We're, everything's fine now. You know? <laughs> and then you kind of relax into that. But, um, um, it, it, if it's really hypertonified, if I press in and I'm doing a, a session on someone and uh, it will make strong men weep um, whenever the, uh, uh, the, the uh, it's, it's one of those very intimate kind of pains that uh, is, um, you know, really gets to you. And it's because we don't, are not aware of it until the pain, until we pass into the pain threshold and it's like, oh, okay, we're, 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 we're there now. So do you think doing the qua exercises are still good? They don't seem to hurt. Absolutely. The qua exercise is the best thing for it. You know, and then you can also notice if it's hurting, then you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah, it doesn't you're probably, hurt. You're probably forcing the, the movement of the, of the hips rather than just, ah, just gently gliding into it, right? So you want to have the idea like, like a screen door just kind of easily swaying in the wind, you know? That, yeah. that, so I do it very small and slow, and afterwards I feel like I can stand straighter without pain. Was there a question there? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, anybody else? 
Okay, so I would like to. Um, we got, we got, okay, we got a few minutes. I would like to do an exercise, kind of branching off of what we just did, and and seeing how to apply that into a repetitive exercise that um, incorporates a piece of uh, like a Tai Chi form. And this is a generic kind of kind of movement going from from the press into a rollback, and you can adapted to whatever whatever form you're doing but the, the the principles are still the same okay so i'm going to talk you through it okay so um bring your uh, right foot forward and go into a uh uh you know 70 30 stance 70 in the in the right and, and 30 in the left okay and Bring your right arm in front of you, curved in front of your chest, okay? But, you know, chest high, hand about chest high, elbow drop, but reaching out, okay? And bring your, your left hand, the palm on the, uh, you know, the palm of the hand on the, uh, the, the right hand. You're like this. There's lots of ways to do your, uh, do a press, but this is just a basic one. And so you feel the ball of the right foot, you set the right knee and release the right claw and turn to the right and open your hands. And just get that so ball, knee, release the claw. So you're spiraling down, you're, you're scooching down there, you're spiraling down and you're opening your hands. Now feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee and turn to the left, bring your hands down. And then notice that my arms, my hands are coming right off my shoulders, my elbows a little wider. They're not up like this, but they're just kind of, kind of arms are kind of rounded a little bit. And uh, the hands are coming down like this together, okay? What I don't want to do is cross over the body like this. I want to bring my hands down, okay? Now I feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left. As I do that, my elbows come up a little bit, and I rotate my forearms, just like that, palms down. Then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and turn, and come back to the press. And I feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, turn, open. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and turn, and come down. So this is the roll away part, roll back part. And then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, arms come up, rotate the forearms, right ball, set the right knee, and turn and press. Right ball, right knee, open. Left ball, Left knee, turn. Left ball, left knee, spiral left, rotate the forearms. Right ball, right knee, turn to the right, turn back to center and press. And spiral down to the right, turn left. Spiral down to the left, turn right. down to the right, turn left, bow down to the left, arms come up, turn right, bow down to the right, open, turn left, hands down, bow down left, arms up, right, and turn. Open, roll away. Raise and press. Yeah. And then shift feet. Okay. And same kind of deal here. We're going, this time we're going to press on the other side. Okay. So feel your left ball, set your left knee, and spiral down to the left. Turn to the right. 
Crown down to the right, arms come up, palms down. Think of your left leg and turn to the left. Left leg, spiral down to the left. Right leg, turn to the right. Right leg, spiral down to the right, arms come up. Left leg, turn to the right, turn to the left. Spiral left, turn right. Spiral down to the right, arms come up. Left leg, turn left. Spiral left, turn right. Spiral right, turn left. Okay. Just relax a moment and just feel the energy that got produced just by that little little set there we did. Every time we do a different kind of configuration, it sends a different energy through the body. It also awakens your nervous system, the sleeping parts of your nervous system. The more you can feel into it and create make that feeling more important than the doing get the get the feeling first and then the doing will follow so right now even though we're, you're motionless there's a lot of feeling going on and allow that to uh to fill you to fill your awareness and it shifts your your awareness into a uh, into a super conscious state and step in deep breath and disappear the chi we're not trying to store up any of the chi we're just trying to create flows so we're plugging into the the big chi in an open system so that we're constantly replenishing and filling up and renewing our resources. We're not just working with a finite amount of energy that the chi is like your breath. You know, you breathe in, you circulate it, you breathe out. You're not trying to hold on to breath for too long. It could be problematic. Any, cool. Any questions on that? Scott. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with spiral to one side and turn to the other at the same time. Okay, so uh, so I, I, it's a it's a distinction I make. Both are kind of turns, but the idea of a spiral down is is like this. You're see, I'm on my right foot, and I feel the ball set the knee, and then I just release the claw, and I'm kind of sitting down into the uh, the right leg. Okay, so there's a there's a you're kind of screwing down into the earth. Right. This is different than than the way Tai Chi is. A lot of people do it. They kind of just push, it's kind of rock side to side, which has a tendency to uproot you. Whereas this way, you oh you're spiraling down. So it's like putting in the clutch on the car. You're you're oh you're get you're disengaging the the hip tension by releasing down, and then the turn means that you're going. The opposite direction but this time it's not a this time it's 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 flat so the first one the plane is like this and that the spiral down and then the turn is flat okay so that's that's the direction of, of the uh, of the thing so for if, if we're going from from uh from a, a, a here we, we spiral down and oh we're going like we're releasing down this is a yin move for releasing down and then we turn this way the hands are coming down but the body is 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 turning like that and then we spiral down to the left sink to the right and then turn to the right and that's when we we actually put it in gear we put the clutch in with the spiral down and then we 
at the point of execution, there is a, we put it in gear. Does that make sense? So it's a spiral. Oh, so it's a spiral and then turn. That's right. right. The spiral yeah. down is, is it's creates a, a yin state. That's a, a, you're going down and in, and then the turn is up and out. You're not centered. Can oh, you? I'm not centered. Okay. I, oh, there we go. Good. Okay, yeah, that that was my confusion. I was trying to do both at once. Okay, no, you can't. can't do, it's a definitely a sequence. First one puts it in, uh, puts in the clutch. The second one shifts it into gear. Good. Uh, give me a give me a Beatrice yeah, or, I, uh, uh, gallery. At some point, you went you used to talk about like like it was like a baseball player winding up to the throw. What's that? At one point, you made an analogy with a baseball player winding up the other direction before they throw. But yes. is it, I'm wondering if that's yin. Is that wind up a yin motion generally? Because you because you just described it somewhat differently. Um, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I guess it is. Oh, it is right. You're gathering and then you're releasing. So yeah, or you can think of it as, as a bow and arrow, right? You're right. drawing back, right, and then releasing. So you're. Um, Similar kind of thing. So if you don't, if you don't do it, if you just try to go, if you just try to make the turn without that, actually, Maria, would you give me a hand here? That's get the okay. So we're just gonna uh, <laughs> all right. So you're you're doing. I'm gonna test you. Okay. What am so I you're doing? Right foot forward. You're gonna go into go into a press. Right. Okay. So. If she's into the press and she has the the whole structure is integrated and 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 stable, okay, and she spirals down to the to the to the right, she opens the hand, spirals down to the right, and reaches out. That same integrity stays. It's all coming from here. The movement's coming from there. Now she's going. She goes to the right there. And then she wants or she wants to go to the left now and op open your hands like this. And then she's going to go and roll away here, and she's going to reach out and and so she uh, she uh, <laughs> she's able to generate a tremendous amount of power because she's turning from the central point here, and it's like uh, it's a, it's like a bicycle wheel. The the hub turns around a very small amount, but the 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 tire goes around in a big circumference. So if she she reaches out and she turns, she is able to direct that. Same thing with this one. If she spirals down here, she's able to have she's able to have a, a lot of the same the same quality there. But then she goes and goes into the press, and she's able to direct it this way. So all that energy is is coming directed through the quad. Yeah, it, it doesn't work if you're not. If you, you haven't engaged the clock first. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Any other questions? Dennis. You have to un un you have to unmute. How about now? There you are. Okay, uh, this, to go back to the beginnings with the elbow gin, all the things you've just shown, it's important to have that elbow in place and the intent using the elbow to move in coordination with the quad. So you take the yes. shoulders out, right? Just saying right. that. That's all. Okay, you just want to make, to make the point that yeah, you want bring to bring it back to that gin too, elbow. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And because that, that ties it all together. Exactly. So that you're able to to direct the direct the energy in a very powerful yet relaxed and graceful way. Anybody else? Okay, so we'll, we'll make this uh, make this video uh, available uh, and on on YouTube and uh, and whatnot, and uh, we'll send a, li a link around um on, on facebook i guess uh for that um and uh, we'll, we'll do this again next week um so happy you came and joined and uh also if you have any requests anything anything you want to uh 
to explore or cover again or or anything else, uh, please uh, let me know because I'm happy to go in any direction you guys want to go. Okay. Otherwise, I have to just kind of reach into my bag and find out some sort of fun <laughs> I can share with you. Okay. Love you all. Bye.